to you. So, today I am going to paint a little picture for you. So, it's a really fun season. It's fall. So, I have a beautiful fall picture in mind to paint for you. Actually, I found this little reference on Pinterest. This is it. So, I thought it would be a nice starting point to my imagery today, and then we could just go from there. Before I get started, I need to give you a few little announcements. So, announcement number one. I am doing a tingles drop, which means I am giving out a large amount of tingles in the description of this video. What's tingles? It's my social <laughs> Tingles is my social currency, or my digital currency, fan base currency, whatever you want to call it. Um, I believe I'm giving them out, I'm looking right now on my app, I am giving out 15,000 tingles that I have. 10 bundles of 15,000 tingles. So, yeah, these uh, tingles do have a, a dollar value and it is approved by the blockchain, which means it is a real currency. But right now, I am in the process of just getting it out to my fans. my app. On my app, which is currently available to download, so you can access extended videos that I offer on my Patreon. I have the extended version of Bathing Suit Try on Haul. I have Feather Fires and Foam. And, uh, what else? Look, here is my app. I'm pulling it up. So under exclusive, I have Popsicle Dream ASMR, Bathing Suit, Try On Haul Extended, and Feather Fire, Fire Feathers and Foam Extended. So, if you're currently a patron, you're welcome to check it out, but if it's between staying a patron or moving to my app and supporting me on there, I would rather you just stay a patron. The reason why is because I feel like I can talk to you better. There's the DMs, there's the pictures, there's, you know, it's easier for me to update. But of course, if you're curious to see what those videos are, you can subscribe just to see that video. And then I have a new tier on my app called Raw Video Files. That one is not yet available, but it will be soon. Probably, I mean, honestly, it may be available actually by the time. I released the video. Uh, if it's, you'll see in the link that I provide in the description of this video, my app, and you will see the different content that you can actually subscribe to. But I am creating a file or a, a 
channel on my app that's just raw video files. So right now I have the raw video um, file for my bathtub teas. So obviously in the raw video file you will see parts of the video that was cut out for my general audience. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. And um, I already released my song, Best I Got. I'll just put the description, uh, the link to my song in the description of this video, so check that out. And I am about to release my, uh, <laughs> I'm about to release my newest song. Um, it's called Maddie's Song, and it's in honor of my friend who passed away while I was actually recording this in the studio. So, yeah. That's my update. <laughs> so, uh, that took a lot longer than I thought. But yeah, let me just show you really quick. This is the app right here. Um, and there. Uh, it's right here. And I'm trying to get the verbiage changed where it just says exclusive and not sensual. Okay, so this is like my melting videos. These are classic ASMR videos. And you can kind of see there's makeup videos. And I have a couple makeup videos that I don't also on YouTube. Uh, here are my painting videos and I have a few unlisted painting videos on there. Uh, and then exclusive, as you can see, I only have three right now. And here's my explore page. And then I will very soon have one that says raw video files. So, yeah, I hope that, that makes sense. Alright. So do in this painting that's a little bit different than my last paintings is I'm just going to leave the light of the canvas uh, for multiple reasons. One is easier. Two, it's, well, easier. <laughs> I think that, that that reason alone counts as two reasons in my opinion. So, I think my first step is I'm going Oh, I need to set this somewhere. Oh well, it's fine just like that. It's actually no, I have to hold it. I'm gonna mix like a shade of purple and one reason I like to use this shade is because it's pretty easy to cover up. So the first step is to kind of get a general feel for Here's this ear, and this is a really fun cartoon type of drawing or illustration, so it's not really considered, I think, a serious painting. It's still really fun. <laughs> Honestly, there. Right 
So I'm just using this little illustration as a reference point. Usually I have something to work off of. Whether it's in life or a picture or uh, another painting, which I very rarely use other paintings as a reference, but sometimes I might refer to a style that they used or some kind of technique that I think is maybe prominent in that particular work. And I try to implement it in my own. So. So I'm going through the form of my fox, even though it's a pretty flat image. I'm just trying to double check the, the shape I have. Wait, where's my paper towels? Oh, there they are. enough ASMR videos to know that all of us are kind of technically challenged to a certain degree. Maybe uh, some more so than others. Uh, but yeah, it's all good. And I, I enjoy what I do enough to where I learn and adjust. So do you have any Thanksgiving plans? If so, what are they? I think we're just doing something at my parents' house. And um, we'll probably just have family and friends over. So I forget to clue you in on what I'm actually mixing, but I'm mixing different shades of orange and uh, raw sienna and burnt umber kind of shades in order to actually uh, fill in my fox. Honestly, the ear is a little bit big. I think I'll be able to trim it down. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my white and go around the places that need to be trimmed. I may or may not end up doing something to the background. So you can see it's kind of smearing, but it's at least giving me an idea where I want the ear to be placed and then I can work all of this into my composition if I so desire or I can just paint over it. So it was wild. The other night we had coyotes in our yard. Oh, it was crazy. I mean, I could hear probably sounded like at least five or six of them and they were in the backyard so we could hear them really really loud and my dog we have a pit bull got really kind of protective which I appreciate um we didn't let him outside but inside he could hear them we all could really like everyone could hear coyotes they were super loud and uh like the hair started standing up on Samson's back my dog 
and uh, really it's just his protective instincts. But I just think it's funny because you can't really teach a dog what is uh, what danger is. It's instinctual. You can't really teach a dog how to behave in danger. I mean, I think you can train dogs for sure. Um, which teaches them how to behave, but like my my dog Samson, you know, he would re react if there was, you know, a reason. But he would never get out of control without that reason, you know. He's a good dog. So now I'm just adding a little bit of white. So it is so cold outside all of a sudden. It was kind of nice. Felt like crisp fall weather in the previous weeks and then literally all of a sudden it was like bam cold outside and I'm not gonna lie I was a little bit mad about it so I'm gonna mix like a deep shade of orange so I am enhancing Enhancing the color. And adding layer. Now I'm going to add some yellow. Now, I'm going to mix, well, I'm just going to use some of this black and do some outlining. So I want the nose to be cute. I think I am actually going to mix some of the purple because I don't want the black to dominate too much. Like, I like the outline. I think it works, but it needs to be more interesting than just a black line. I like it when I really look closer and there's a little more to the painting than what, what meets the eye at first. You know what? This whole area needs to just be there. So now he has his face. Alright. The reason I can't really do a step by step painting, I mean, I can technically. But why I really don't like doing step-by-step -step paintings is because paintings are not A to Z. 
And the more upheaval a painting goes through, the more likely it will be rich and meaningful. I feel like there. Now I'm like super focused. <laughs> Sometimes you have to wait for the paint to kind of dry a little bit before you get too crazy. Um, there we go. It's funny because most of the time people quit before the painting can actually be anything. Uh, it's hard to stick it out whenever it's not really turning out the way you want it to, but if you do, you have a painting. <laughs> is so cute. Alright, so I have this other brush that I'm going to use. To lay on the white some of these marks back. There we go. But yeah, I, uh, I went to church today. I've been going to church more so lately. Um, I really enjoy the encouraging messages. And, um, I am a Christian. I just sometimes I'm not a very good one um, if there's even such a thing I think that uh, I think it's fun to be in community. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know if fun is a word, but I think it's necessary. Oh, yeah. I think that that needs to be a little bit. you have to mess it up to bring it back. 
You know, it's so funny. I learned so much about life through art and painting. I think that that's why I kind of keep going back to it because I solve a lot of my problems in life on the canvas or on the whatever it is I'm doing. I mean, since I've been writing music and stuff, Sometimes I feel like I solve problems through my lyrics or through whatever it is I'm doing. You know? See, now I think that there's a little bit more interest in the composition because it's not just floating. But that was one thing I didn't really like. I do like the white background, but I don't like it just floating. The other thing that kind of conflicts with my personal painting style is really harsh edges which sometimes I can do, but if I want to, but a lot of times I like it to have a painterly effect. Otherwise there's no point in painting it. You know, if this is, you know, my reference image is great for what it is. You know, I am not knocking what it is, but since I'm making a painting, I have to answer to the canvas not the reference image, and I think that that's what starts to, one of the things that starts to kind of separate artists, uh, amateur artists and artists who uh, can make substantial work. Alright, so now that I have that, Oh, I wanted to work on the eye. I want to make it a little cuter. There we go. Um, so, something I really love about this image is the leaves. I think it adds to the fox because it's accompanied by a little bit of nature. It's almost like the spirit of the fox is extending through the leaves. That's how I see it at least. It's a good time. Who doesn't love this? <laughs> It's interesting because something to note that a truly confident painter can bring order to the painting at any point. Meaning, if it's not perfect, 
where if the lines aren't smooth or whatever, it's okay because that is not what makes a good painting. That's like technical skill that you can, a truly confident painter can bring to that element to their painting at any point. But it's about capturing something a little bit more special, or something that you can't maybe put your finger on right away that makes the painting worthwhile. And uh, sometimes you can't really teach that how to actually incorporate that element into your work. I mean, it's something you teach yourself by doing. <laughs> by doing. Meaning you, you, to become a painter, you just gotta get into it. You just gotta go for it. And then you learn about paint as you paint. And uh, you learn your limitations because you're faced with them. And you learn how to problem solve through the painting process. <sighs> but it's funny because uh, I've been strangely happy lately. Uh, I think part of it's because I'm in alignment with my purpose. I'm doing art, making music, spending time with my family, influencing people. You can't really ask for a better gig. And if you stay in an attitude of gratitude, you just get more good stuff. That's something I've learned. So. Uh, I'm trying a new thing where I stop complaining. I bring my complaints to God. And then call in the goodness. a little bit stronger. I don't want to contain it too much with the outline. I want it to be, I mean, I like the outline. It needs to be there, but in a appropriate amount in places. Where is my dark? I'm, I'm using purple a little bit interchangeably with my black as my medium value. Um, so yeah, maybe I could add a little bit back there. And if I bring it in. Ooh, that's pretty. That's really nice. I had a feeling that would add to it.
a little cast shadow in my uh, reference image because the fox is floating. There's no shadow. In a world where foxes are flat, there are no shadows, I guess. Which, honestly, there's not really much of a shadow there either, but at least it does not look completely disconnected from the ground. I think that that's kind of the goal. So right now I'm just being picky and adding some finishing touches before I call it good. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to very carefully mold all of this kind of together. It's a painting idea. I'm not going to touch the box. I know if I had more time, I might go through it with my rag. set, honestly. What do you think? <laughs> Alrighty. I hope you enjoyed this ASMR painting session. Thanks for being here and for supporting my work and just for relaxing to my videos and I hope you found this to be an enjoyable and enriching experience. Thank you and I'll see you next time.